Hello YouTube world, thank you for stopping by again. So now that we got Gmail out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into a calendar, the Google Calendar. So uh, you send out an email, you got your you got your uh, website up with the website builder, right? So you got your uh, G Suite account and you've already sent out a couple of Gmails here. And uh, now uh, you got a couple of uh, clients that are trying to set up meetings to go meet you or to meet you and talk about your business needs. Or talk about your your business services and business products here. So uh, yeah, they need definitely need a calendar. So that's why it is the next thing. Uh, so uh, I'm already logged in here. You can go to calendar.google.com and log in. Uh, I'm already logged in. So let's go ahead and get to it. Of course, there's the mobile apps. All right, and now that we're in. We got a, I don't, you know, this is a brand new account here, so it's not gonna have any type of events. Of course, it has Halloween. It's coming up here on thirty first. I am on the twenty third. I was like, I'm gonna create a new event. Uh, let's create new event. All right, it's gonna be today at one p.m. I want to say it's like at. I think it's it's twelve thirty right now. So yeah, I'm gonna say one p.m. And it finishes at two, and it does end today. So it's not gonna be a repeat, it's just gonna be a regular event. We're at, I'm gonna do a Houston Zoo. All right, and then going to the zoo. About to swim with the fishes. All right, you can add an attachment here. So of course, we have to get it started. Uh, I don't have any type of uh, files that I can add. I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm not going to add any attachments. So like if you have maybe let's say a, an event flyer or a detailed description of the event, you can add it here as a PDF file. Of course, you can uh, color code your, your events. I'm going to leave it as is. The aqua maroon here. Or probably baby blue. Not aqua maroon. I'll keep it at aqua maroon, I'll say. You can get notifications through email, so 10 minutes before the, the uh, event. And actually, since it's 10 or 12.30, I might get a new e email here soon. I'll put 10 minutes, uh, add notification. All right, and show me as available, of course. And then visibility, you can make the event public or private. The calendar default will be public. So event details will be visible to anyone who can see details of other events in this calendar. So actually, it might be private here because I can see the details. Of course, public will make it to all, to everyone who has access to the calendar, even if they can't see details of the other events. I'll leave it as de uh, default. <clears throat> of course, guest. When, if you send out, let's say I'm sending it out to uh, my demo app. There we go. Guests can invite invite others, see guest list, and you can actually let them modify events as well. I'm not gonna do that here. Uh, I can see some some bad things going wrong if you allow everybody to modify your event there. So a lot of confusion could be taking place there. Of course, you can find a time, and we're gonna select this time, of course, and we're done. So let's go ahead and save. And as you can see, it has saved into the calendar. And I can click on it. Pretty much anywhere, right? Anywhere in the box there, and it will show up the detail, the title of it, when is it going to be, where it's going to be, and joining info. So if you want to do a little meet, a hangout, you can do that. And of course, it's going to ask you, are you going to go? So yes, maybe, and and I'm gonna go with yes. All right, so I replied with yes. Of course, if I hit the actual title, the actual title will take me into the details, and I can keep on adding or editing the the event. So, not because I'm a guest, but because I'm the one that created the event. So, if you give access to your guests to YouTube Modify, they'll be able to do that as well. All right, of course, you're gonna do a monthly calendar, four days agenda. That's pretty neat. So, showing events until 
January 15, 2018. All right. December 31st is a Sunday. That is awesome. That is awesome. Okay. I didn't know that. All right. Let's go back and, and Christmas is. Wow. So Sunday, Monday. That's awesome. And, of course, you can do the daily, weekly, monthly, four days. All right. And you see day one, day two. Ah. Day one, day two, day three, day four. A week, month. <clears throat> yep. You can refresh. Of course, you can print. You want to print your calendar. Depending on what you have here. See, I have week. And wants to print out the week calendar. I have day. And wants to print out the day calendar. Of course, add some events so you can have some to print. <laughs> and you don't want. You don't. You don't want just want to print a. Unless actually, this would be a good a. Uh, that's a good setup for like a, a workout or something. If you need some empty boxes to fill in, that'd actually be good right there. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have docs, so if you want to do that, we can do it in docs as well. So yeah, the uh, the event calendar is pretty pretty straightforward. Pretty uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, you can actually add some a quick add. That was a drop down. I hit the arrow here. I'm just gonna put what the example actually says. Dinner with myself. 7 p.m. tomorrow. Let's see what that does. And it automatically knows when tomorrow is. That's awesome. Um, lunch. With coworker next week, or I'm put 4 p.m. next week. Does it know what next week is? And as you can see, it did not put next week. It put it. It set it for today. So it's a couple things here. I guess we can't be that lucky. Uh, dinner with coworker. Um, I'll put next week is the thirtieth, October thirtieth, four p.m. And it does add it. So it didn't do it didn't do next week. It didn't like next week, uh, but I did put the date October thirtieth, and it did do it. Of course, it automatically assumes twenty seventeen. I wonder if uh, brunch with With you and my battery's getting low with this uh, with the mouse here. With you, bat brunch with you. I'm gonna put 3 p.m. So, I'm also gonna put a day that's already passed, October 9th, and it does save it for 2018. Undo that. It's pretty neat. All right, and as as usual, like in the Gmail here, uh, we have the uh, settings. We have comfortable, cozy, compact, compact. Pretty much compresses everything together. Cozy, a little bit less, and comfortable. It has more space between all the elements here. So just look at the day, week, month, four days. See what I'm talking about. Cozy, compact, comfortable. All right. Of course, the settings tab. We have your general. Language, country. We already have that. Central time zone. I am central. Uh, date, date format, if you want to change the date format, you can. I like it that way. Time format, if you want to do 2400, I like the regular. Notifications, I don't want any notifications. Events from Gmail add automatically. So if, if someone sends you an event in Gmail, they'll automatically add to your calendar. I'm going to leave it like that. Default event duration, um, 60 minutes, that is usual for events. Week starts on a Sunday, I'm going to leave it at that. Working hours. So show a warning to other people when they invite me to an event outside my working hours. So if I don't have working hours and you invite me outside of my working hours, it's gonna it's gonna let them know. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I really like that there. Uh, dim past in, in, uh, dim past events. Dim recurring events. Uh, show weekends and week and month view. I like that. Uh, default view is week. Uh, custom view is four days. All right, and the location, you can set your location where you're at right now. You can also show weather based on my location. I like Fahrenheit. Okay, show events you have declined. Yes. Automatically add invitations to my calendar. Yes. Alternate calendar, you can actually put Chinese calendar, Hebrew calendar, 
and I don't have a Persian calendar, but we're going to stick with the Gregorian calendar, which is the regular calendar that we have here. Gregorian calendar. If you don't know what that is here, I want to say it was developed by the Romans. I'm not sure if that's accurate. Let me see here. No, Julian calendar was the Romans. Let's see. Get his name. Why are we even looking at this? So, all right, doesn't matter. Anyway, back to that. But it is the Gregorian calendar that we're on here. So save, and that's that. We are actually done with the calendar. So very straightforward application. It's not a the forty four minutes that we that we saw here on with Gmail. Uh, you know, just Gmail has actually a lot more. Calendar is just that one uh, little application, just setting up events. So, of course, you can look for more there. We have 2018 Valentine's on a Wednesday. And Martin Luther King Day. Yeah, so we're done here. My calendars. Of course, we have calendars for me. For display only this calendar. It can display all the other calendars. course you already know how to do that how to add go to today takes you back to today you can search in your calendar events what was the uh, oh yeah uh, zoo put new and in the title itself is new event so this is the one that comes up with in the search of course you can actually detail Search the calendar. So, what is it? Who is it? Where doesn't have the date. The actual date was the 23rd here. 23rd search and takes me back to the new event and then lunch with coworker next week. Remember, I put the uh, try to do the, the quick ad next week. It didn't get picked up as uh, the, net, the following week, unfortunately. It added it for this day. Uh, so, we can print the calendar as well. And we're done. So that's that's done with the uh, with the calendar. I hope you uh, you enjoyed this here. And as I mentioned, I am going to go through the desktop versions of the applications, and then we'll go to the mobile version so we can be on the go while we're setting up events. So it's gonna be fun. I do appreciate you stopping by once again here, and I am out. I'll see y'all soon. Thanks.